welcome back we'll talk about http common logging in this video this video is an extension of our last video which was on web logic log configuration we will also cover how to invoke a web service using curl command if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe my channel for more interesting videos related to web logic administration or soa development Let's get straight to the documentation. So, this is the common logging format of our HTTP logs. Here you can see the first column is host. It will hold the DNS name and the IP address of the client. And the second column is RFC 931. So, this RFC 931 is an identification server. And mostly you will be seeing a hyphen in this column. Next is auth user. So, if you are service is basic auth enabled you will be seeing the username which client is passing to call your service after that you will be seeing the time and date format of the request and then you will see the request itself next column is for the http status code which is successful then mostly you will see http 200 there so last column is bytes it's a length of your http header Let's go to console and see how we can configure or change a logging format in our weblogic server. For that, we'll go to our server. Then you can click logging. And in the HTTP tab, you'll have to go to advance. And here we can change a logging format. So you can see it is extended. And uh, we are going to change this to common. For that you'll have to take a lock and uh, you can then change it to common so guys remember if you are selecting common format then you won't be able to change the sequence or uh, the value of column headers also you can see a yellow mark here which means it requires a restart after the activation of our session so we will save it and activate our session now you can see we'll have to restart our server so for restart you can go to view changes and restart and in the restart checklist tab you can click on your server and restart this only works when your server is started with node manager so you click yes and you can see our server is getting restarted let's go to our server log location and here you will be able to see access log so this log is in our extended format and you can see those attributes here so our first column is for date the second column is for time this is our http method this is ecid this is rid and this is uri and after that you can see the http status code and this is the size of http header Similarly, after the restart, we will be able to see access log in our common logging format. So our server has been restarted. Now, to generate some HTTP logs, we'll have to test a service. And for that, we have already developed a Hello World service. You can watch my previous video. I have put that link in the I button. We will test that service to generate some logs and we'll see how uh, it is in our access logs. Let's go to SB console and see that service. So here it is. We'll go to proxy service and we will have a look on our endpoint. So this is our endpoint. Uh, let's try to call this endpoint. So we'll use curl minus v. So minus v is for verbose. Here we'll give our host name and port and then the endpoint so you can see it is http 200 and we were able to invoke it if you want to pass a payload while calling this endpoint you can use hyphen hyphen data let's see that so here you can see we are using curl minus v again uh, but for the payload we are using minus minus data or hyphen hyphen data and here we have our payload since we are adding our lines into new line we are using this forward slashes 
so if in your payload there is no new line you can remove this forward slash and uh, you can use it so let's hit this endpoint and you can see we were able to call it and this time our output is hello mazahir how to generate some traffic on that endpoint we will create a script and then we will call it repetitively so that we see some request in our access logs so here you can see we have one script in that script we have simply put our curl command you can see here and now we are going to invoke this repetitively you can use cron tab also to do that but we are simply using watch and to invoke this in every 5 seconds we will use minus n and we will put 5 as an interval and then we will run our command that is sh and the name of script that is call endpoint dot sh so this command will run our script in every 5 seconds and uh, just because of this we will have traffic which can be tracked in access logs just notice this time let's go to other window and we will tail our access logs now so we are in our log directory and here we should be able to see our access logs so this is our access log we will tail this and here you can see there is a slight change in the format so all these previous logs are in extended format and all these new logs are in our common logging format so this is date and time in gmt format here we have http method this is our endpoint this is our protocol and the version this is http response code that is http 200 for the success and this one is our size for the http header now you can see first two columns are empty with hyphen so this one is for our user so we can track our auth user here since our web service is not enabled with the basic auth we are not seeing anything here and the first column is for the rfc which we spoke earlier now let's enable basic auth in our web service and see if we are getting username here or not now we will go to our sb console again we'll create a session here let's go to transport details and here we can enable our basic authentication we can save this and activate the session since our script is still running you can see it is giving us 401 now that is unauthorized and we will see our access logs also so here also you can see it is having 401 status code in this column so we'll have to do a slight change in our script so that we can pass our user credentials so let's do that and now we will add a hyphen u and give user details here our user is weblogic and password is welcome one and we will save this and we will run our script again and you can see we have http 200 again let's monitor our access logs so here you can see it is successful again with http 200 and this time we are seeing our username in this column that's it for this video in the next video we will see extended logging format and we will also see how we can trace username password using custom extended logging fields so stay tuned uh, for that exciting video if you found this video helpful please like my video subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification and don't forget to leave a comment so that i can cover different different topics for you thank you